It's the first Friday in June. It's around seven, five past seven in the evening. I've come to Blackdown on the Mendip Hills with a few intentions. Firstly, to get some exercise. And secondly, to um, try out my cook kit I put together a few weeks ago. And mainly to see how well the Optimus windshield performs because it's quite breezy up here. It's what I wanted. It's also a bit rainy, which I wasn't expecting, even though it's quite overcast. There's no one else here apart from these cows. And um, I'm going to try and find somewhere, fingers crossed on the weather, a bit of a view, and somewhere I can cook my dinner because I bought with me a simple. Um, pasta meal from a supermarket, one of those cheap things. But yeah, those are my intentions for today. I've been out running locally to where I live um, three evenings this week, which has been quite good. Good to get that going, get the routine going. Only doing like 2.8 miles per day, but it's, it's quite a lot for me. This is still a very new thing for me to do. Heading towards higher ground of Black Down right now. It still looks very grey and gloomy to the west. A bit bright going east, but the west the wind's coming from the west and I can't even see South Wales, it's so grim over there. But fingers crossed I can find somewhere and have some food. You can just see the Brecon Beacons uh, beyond River Severn over there, beyond the estuary. But it is very gloomy and there's definitely a very dark cloud coming this way. The jacket I'm wearing is a soft shell and it's rated as being good for being showerproof but not waterproof. I should be fine here on this occasion. Um, it's also windproof. This is the first soft shell I've ever bought. I normally buy like a full jacket. I only bought this one a few weeks ago, a month ago maybe, on eBay. It's made by Crag Hoppers, a pretty good brand that I quite like. And I got it for £25. It's normally 35 or 40 brand new, so I'm quite pleased with that. I'm also pleased with being up here today, even though it's grey and a bit spitty with the rain. The views from here. I never get tired of these. It may not be Dartmoor or the Lake District, but it's pretty awesome. I'm almost on the ridge now and the rain's coming in, typically. Put away the microphone, so I'm using my inbuilt mic now. Put the cover on my camera to keep it all dry and safe. On no hood, so it's waterproof hat time. I'm quite liking it. I may abandon my dining plans and go home and break the fridge freezer when I get there. But still, even now, I'd rather be here than sat at home watching Netflix. This is also a good test for my camera, the DJI Osmo Action, which I haven't really got one yet. So far, so good. Even the touch screen is working quite well. I'm going to carry on towards Beacon Back to the highest points and the trig points, and then probably head down towards lower ground.
Here we are then, Beacon Batch, 325 meters above sea level, the highest point on the Menin Hills. Over that way is West Supermare, where I live, across North Somerset, North East Somerset and Bath. Down there is Blackton Lake. Over that way is Wells, and Cheddar would be over there. I think of the area here as being my own local Dartmoor on a very small scale. And I have many thoughts about wild camping up here at some point. Well, it's not illegal, I should mention. And I would never do it during lockdown, of course, but maybe somewhere down the line I'll think about doing it again. There's so much space up here. I think you could be quite covert about it. And the only concern I do have really is that there are livestock on this land. Normally just horses, which I've not seen today actually, but more commonly now you see cows and cattle grazing the area and I'm not sure how a cow would react to finding a tent in the night. Just come down the hill and I'd normally go down this track, cross the road beneath it and continue along and continue along um, Burrington Ham and then down to my car. But instead I'm gonna go left here and gradually rejoin my outward route. The downside now is that I'm heading east into the rain and getting it face on. And as far as my jacket goes, it's sort of beading, also not beading, but it is showerproof, not waterproof. And my trousers are from Mountain Warehouse. They're not soaking wet. These were 20 quid, not too bad. Could be a lot worse. They're quite damp, but it could be worse. But my head is nice and dry, and so are my feet. So that's something. Even though the sun's now breaking out, I'm going to abandon my plans for dining up here, as I said. I'll try and come out again. Uh, maybe next week sometime. I don't mind walking and moving in damp clothing, but sitting in it for any period of time is just not really my thing. I sacrificed some of my um, warmer layers so I carry the weight of my milk and the water and the meal for tonight, which, um, yeah. And before I go, I want to say a big thanks to everyone who's recently subscribed. I'm not sure where you all come from, but I think I've had a recent mention from Mark, the White Explorer. And I really appreciate your support. I want to give a shout out to Dean, Life on the Rocks. Um, I met Dean very briefly during Trev's uh, mini, ten mini 10 tours walk on Dartmoor last November, I think it was. Dean's channel is Life on the Rocks. He lives further south in Somerset and I think he's fairly new to YouTube. He has a lot of walking and well, camping and bushcraft stuff, well worth checking out. Here is one of two brooks in the area, but as you can see, it's almost bone dry this time of year. I think this is East Twinbrook. Yep. In the winter there's much more water flowing down here. If we briefly follow this upstream, I'll show you a secret. A 
again there's normally a lot of water running through here in the winter time and in the hillsides this big doorway full of deep mud inside very wet I've never actually been inside but you can see for yourself it's quite Right in there, very dark. I can see some bats in there as well, it's quite cool. Anyway. I believe it's to do with the old mining industry that once inhabited this land. All over the Mendips, different ores and things were mined here. And if you head up these steps, you'll find the entrance to Goat Church Cavern. You can safely walk through with a torch for about 30 or 40 meters before you need proper um, before you need before you need um, proper climbing gear to go any further. It's quite a nice place to be in the winter time. I was in there in January. It's quite warm and dry. And on the left here we have. Sidcot Swallet, a very small opening. I think I went through most of these about 25 years ago with Mendip Outdoor Pursuits when I was a kid. Thanks again for watching and subscribing and liking. Please share the video and Check out the links below to Dean's channel and also to Mark the White Explorer. I will see you again soon.